if you're ever feeling down or bad, like giving is the best thing that you could ever do, especially when you don't have anything. If you wanna help yourself, help someone else. Welcome back to The Astrology Report. My name is Cam White, and we have a not too exciting week this week. Actually really chill. I'm looking forward to it because we're in the middle of eclipse season. So while this whole two week period is really crazy, this is kind of like a slight moment of peace. And so, well, let's just go ahead and go into it. We don't have too many highlights this week, but we do start off the week with one of our highlights, which is for one, the moon will be making a square to Neptune as it leaves Gemini, but the sun will make a sextile to Saturn, which is, you know, that's a boring week when that's one of the highlights. After that though, the moon will ingress into Cancer and make a trine to Saturn. Really liking Monday. I think as we start Monday off though, it's a little stressful because as the moon's in Gemini, you know, chatty Cathy, a little overstimulated, a little bit too much, we're a little bit overwhelmed. And as it squares Neptune, it's like, well, do I want to do this? Or do I want to do that? Or is this where I need to go? It's kind of like, um, I went to Home Depot the other day because I was looking for this stupid part and the freaking like, uh, what, what the, the little eyelets don't match up with the drywall anchors. Like, even though they have this numbering system and I was walking back and forth up and down this aisle and it literally made no sense. And that's how I feel about the moon and Gemini squaring Neptune and Pisces is like, is this the right thing? Is this the right thing? Trying to check all the numbers. And it was, so I gave up on those and I just bought other hooks that I needed. So moon and Gemini squaring Neptune and Pisces. You may not get all the information that you need or all the information that you get is not making any type of sense. So it's one of those things where <laughs> sometimes it's better to just drop that and do something completely different. But the sun is going to be making a sextile to Saturn, where uh, I, what I like about this is with the sun being in Taurus, we're in Taurus season, everything's feeling a little bit more grounded, a little bit more stable. With Saturn and Pisces, you know, when we talk about discipline and maturity and responsibility, it's in the sign of like our emotions, you know, adaptability. There is this level of like feeling more secure with the Saturn and Pisces energy of just being like, you know what, things are changing and I'm okay with it feeling a little bit more comfortable with it rather than feeling like, you know, it's kind of like if you start a uh, school uh, in a new school and maybe like at first it was like really weird. And then like, you kind of just, you know, you meet some people, you get a little bit more, more warmed up to it. That's how I would look at this sun Saturn sextile. So we're into this new thing. We're starting to feel a little bit more stable in it. The moon will then enter cancer and it's going to make a trine to Saturn. I love this. Um, this is, well, the moon rules cancer, right? And the moon's about our emotions, the body, you know, how we feel day to day. It's in cancer. We're really thinking about our needs. What do we need to protect ourselves? Like, where do we need to nourish ourselves? You know, Monday is ruled by the moon. And so I always think about like I, laundry day for me is Monday. Cleaning day for me is Monday. Taking care of myself is like a Monday thing for me, unless I'm making music. But it will make a trine to Saturn where there is this level of like, all right, cool. I'm feeling good. Um my emo like you could be more emotional but because it's trining saturn there's kind of like this it, it's not like you know saturn in aquarius or capricorn where it's like no emotion we have to be serious saturn in pisces is like no we have to be more mature about our emotions we can't just like let them go all over the place willy-nilly we have to like learn how to control our emotions and but also like express them in a healthy way and understand what they actually mean and that's what i like about this moon and cancer trining saturn is like we're exploring our emotions, but in a way that creates a little bit more of a foundation of like, why do I feel this way? Um, what 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 is making me feel this way? Like sadness isn't always necessarily bad. Um, oftentimes we just want to avoid all of our feelings. And while there's a certain, maybe a place and a time for that, I feel like this is a time to like feel your feelings, but being aware that that is what you're experiencing and not just being like, oh, I'm emotional and now I'm crying and now I'm spiraling, but just kind of like, hey, I'm feeling a little bit more sensitive and feeling a little bit more vulnerable. Um, maybe this is a great opportunity for me to experience that. So Monday's not that big of a deal, but I feel like there is this nice kind of level of, you know, everything's in water and earth at this point, except Venus and Jupiter. But so there's this level of like grounded groundedness and nourishment that feels pretty good. We move into Tuesday. The moon will then conjoin Mars and make a sextile to Mercury. This is where it gets tough because again, the moon uh, in Cancer, so we're focusing on necessity, we're focusing on the body, and it's hitting Mars. So there is this kind of like disruption there. There is this kind of conflict there. There is this sort of irritability. Mars in Cancer is really good at being crabby, really good at being like, you know, emotional, act like acting out on our emotions in a bad way. And with the moon conjoining Mars, I feel like there can be this kind of emotional reaction of just like, you know, you're, you're crabby and upset, you're hurt, so you react and you go straight into revenge. Um, 
And try not to do that. Like, you know, there's the three R's, resist, uh, resentment, resist, resistant, resistance, resentment, and revenge. So like, you know, if you're resisting something, that's something to think about. If you have resentment about something, that's like, okay, like, well, let's don't go deeper into that. But you don't ever want to go in revenge mode where you just go, you know what? Like, because they did this to me, I'm going to do this to them. Like that never actually plays out in your favor, like ever. And it makes you probably worse off. But as the moon conjoins Mars, there is that level of like almost wanting that or having an emotional reaction that makes you think that way. But kind of bouncing off what I said last week with we have Mercury retrograding in Taurus. The moon is going to be making a sextile to Mercury as it conjoins Mars. This is all stuff that we need to do. Not I'm not saying, you know, being in revenge mode is what we need to do, but like taking care of the things that we need to take care of, like. Mars in Cancer is like, all right, I have to take action on stuff that kind of don't want to do, feeling a little bit upset about it, but I know it's going to be good for me. And I think this is a great opportunity to really like rethink a certain area of your life, right? So it's like if you go, in, if you get a, you know, triggering situation, you know, rather than going straight into revenge and crabbiness and self-sabotage, it's like, this is an excellent opportunity to rethink, how do you handle this? Like rather than going into revenge mode, why don't you, you know, um, like it's it's a it's almost a comical saying nowadays, but I'm pretty sure it's in the Bible. It's like pray for like your haters. <laughs> I know that's not what the Bible says, but it's, it's pretty much along those lines. Pray for your enemies or something like that. Like that doesn't mean you need to like you know kiss their feet and shit like that. But there's this level of like you know rather than acting out in harm, where can you like take care of something? Where can you give back to something? Like you know if you're ever feeling down or bad, like giving is the best thing that you could ever do, especially when you don't have anything. Like, it's amazing how, especially my generation, and I just think society is just so corrupt. I'm like, it's, it, everyone's very selfish in terms of like, oh, I don't have anything, so it needs to be about me and people need to help me. It's like, if you want to help yourself, help someone else. Like, really. And I know some people will probably have resistance to that, but it's just one of those things where, like, if you don't have anything, be grateful for what you do have. Like, going over your blessings, going over, like, how good your life is. Like, as much as you want to sit here and complain, which you have every right to do, if you're here in America, you've got it pretty good. Like, yes, I'm sure, oh, my God, Europe's so much better. There's healthcare, and it. But at the end of the day, like, and again, there's some of you there that, you know, have, you know, disabilities or some of you, you know, didn't have parents or whatever that is. You still had something that someone else didn't have that would kill for. And... I'm bringing all of this up because I just think on Tuesday it's going to be so easy to be crabby and like, you know, disappointed and upset. And it's such a good opportunity to just be like, you know, with Mercury being retrograde, like, why am I complaining? Like, why am I whining? Like, why don't I just like, you know, actually be grateful for what I have and take care of it? You know what I mean? Like, it's like if you, you know, wish you had a better, nicer car, the best way. And I've said this before, you're never going to be able to enjoy what it is that you want if you can't enjoy with uh, enjoy what you have now. If you want, if you just think that you're broke and you need more money and that's the only way to be happy, you're never going to be happy because it's never going to be enough money. It's never going to be enough stuff. We're all consumers and we just go, 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 go. I want more, 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 more. That's how we're all wired because it all comes from scarcity. If you want to make a million dollars and you want to actually enjoy it, you got to enjoy with what you have right now. You got to be grateful for what you have right now because what you have right now is really all you need. And and again, I know I'm totally going to get a lot of resistance to that, but whatever, um, I'm right. But I think as the moon conjoins Mars, like it's an excellent opportunity for you to like be more like just open-minded to problem solving skills. Again, like I talked last week about like de-escalation and just not being so emotionally reactive, like when you're emotionally reactive, that's what gets you into trouble. Um, you know, especially for like men, like men who get like their like if you go to a bar, you go drinking, and a guy gets like, you know, their ego bruised a little bit and gets insecure. You know, they want to fight and they want to act like a tough guy, and that's just them showing kind of like their weakness in a sense. Um, and you don't want to do that. It's what gets you into trouble. And that's like Mars and Cancer. Like if you're just gonna emotionally react out of and and act in anger and act in spite, you're gonna get in trouble and it's not really gonna feel good. So I would recommend on Tuesday just allowing yourself to calm yourself down take like again if you're like really angry and upset about something go for a walk you know go get some coffee go like for me i go for a fucking drive when i'm really like upset about something i turn on some music the first five minutes i'm pissed but then afterwards i get distracted by shiny things and then i'm like you know i'm still upset but i'm not nearly as like embodied in my emotional rage as i would be if i had just like still acted in it 
So Tuesday is a really good day to rethink your anger, rethink, you know, upset emotions and just not allow yourself to like emotionally react. Then we get to Wednesday. Uh, the moon will make a square to Jupiter and it will try Neptune. So this is kind of interesting to me. I wouldn't I mean, it's not a highlight because it's not a major transit. But what's interesting is this moon's in Cancer where, and this is a, now a waxing moon, right? It's gaining in light. We're getting ready for this last lunar eclipse that we have in Scorpio coming up here in May. But the moon being in Cancer, we're still focused on necessity and emotions and our body and what we need to take care of and what we need to spoil ourselves with. And as it squares Jupiter, the, and again, Jupiter's in the superior position to the moon here where it's kind of a tough situation because the moon in Cancer is like, well, this is what I need to take care of, but... Jupiter and Aries is kind of like, well, you still need to get out of your comfort zone. Like the moon in Cancer is all about being comfortable. And I think as the moon conjoins Mars, there's this level of not being in your comfort zone, but then, you know, having that, like not being in your comfort zone and then the pendulum swings back and you're like, I need to be comfort. I need to be safe. I need to be secure. And it's like, you know, those are all really important things. But I think as Jupiter squaring, it's like your comfort zone, when you're out of your comfort zone is where you grow. And what actions do you need to take right now um, especially real, I mean, this is Jupiter and Aries when it comes to our beliefs and our faith, it's in Aries. We have to take action. Sometimes we have to be confrontational. Sometimes we have to do things differently. And I just kind of question with this moon squaring Jupiter, like, do you need to be in your comfort zone in order to feel safe? Where can you feel a little bit more power outside of your comfort zone? Like, you know, if it's more comfortable for you to just ignore life's problems and, and, and sweep them under the rug, like, but you know that, you know, that builds up resentment and that builds up, you know, in the back of your mind and the subconscious and that plays out in other areas of your life. It's like, you know, where do you know that you need to take a little bit more of assertive action? You know, if, like, for example, if your comfort zone is just like going back to drinking or drugs, is there is there an opportunity where you can maybe implement a new system of dealing with anger or dealing with upset emotions? And that's how I look at this. And it's not going to be easy. Like, none of this stuff is easy. It's um, a lot of people comment of like, Oh, why is it always hard? Why is it always bad? It's like, you know, life is what you make it. You know, you know, I know people like if you ever do any type of like actual labor, and I know the Gen Z people like to be like working retail is labor, but I'm like physical labor. Like you work at a construction, you work on a farm. Like there's people where like, and, I, and I'm like this too. I'm like, fuck this job. <laughs> like anytime I had to like work as a kid on the farm, it was just like, it was just annoying. But then there's other people like, this is easy. Like this is great work. Like and you got to realize where what might be like annoying and bad for you is actually someone else's like walk through a park. You know what I mean? Like your pro like someone would kill for your problems. Like, have you ever heard of that saying where if you threw all of your problems into like a pit with other everybody else's problems, you take yours back in an, in an instance. And so that's kind of what this is like. But another but the other thing is with it squaring Jupiter is just finding a different way to handle those problems, not going back into self-sabotaging behaviors, not um, allowing yourself to be crippled by comfort. You know, we're creatures of comfort, but this world has just created nothing but comfort for us. I mean, like we're literally wrapped in luxuries. If you're in, in any type of Western country, you kind of don't get a right to say, like, cause I got people that watch this from all types of other countries that don't get the right to say like how comfortable life is there. Um, but we really are surrounded by comfort and it's really easy to go back into that it's human nature. But, and it's not about like, you know, <laughs> like forcing yourself into these horrible situations, but like, if you need to deal with the problem and we're talking about Jupiter and Aries, there's a lot of like, Hey, you can do more, you can be better. You can, you know, you don't need to just sink in your, you know, se um, self-deprecating, like, you know, self-talk, like you can be a better person if you want to. And I think just this moon squaring Jupiter is just very like, hey, I know I need to do this. Um, again, Mars is here. It's not really fun, but there is a lot of like, I think you will feel worse if you just do what's comfortable on Wednesday versus if you just get a little bit out of your comfort zone and do a little bit more of the right thing that you know is right for you. I think that is what's going to be good about Wednesday. We get into Thursday. So week is moving quick. It's a very chill week. And I want you to think about that because next week is not chill. We have a lot going on next week. And so what I love about the chill weeks where there's not that much highlights is like we get to really be with like the moon transits. We get to really be with like the day to day. So it's not like, oh, my God, this is happening and this is happening. And we're we got all these events going on in our lives. It's very just like, hey, day by day, we're taking one step at a time. It's very simple. Thursday, the moon will go into Leo. It's going to go opposite Pluto. <clears throat> then the moon will square the sun and Mercury. 
squaring the sun isn't a big deal, but <clears throat> the moon will go into Leo. Our emotions, our body, Leo, we're talking about image, we're talking about uh, being witnessed, we're talking about being seen, glorified, our ego, our pride, our will. And I think there's a lot of like confidence on Thursday that kind of comes up of like, hey, I handled that situation. Um, from Thursday to Saturday, the moon's going to be trining Jupiter. I think this is excellent for feeling very confident. <laughs> Sorry, I just said excellent. And I so I play Frisbee golf and every now and then I like will throw a really good throw and I'll be like, excellent. And then the first thing that comes to my head is like white people be like, excellent. <laughs> and anyway, um, so anyway, the moon will go into Leo. I think you're going to be feeling pretty, uh, you know, prideful. And not in like a, it, it could be a bad way, like try not to like over pump your ego. But I think if you handle Wednesday really well, there is this level of confidence that comes up and it's going opposite Pluto. Like here's the thing too, with the Pluto and Aquarius stuff. And and, and I'm going to, I've talked a lot about the Leo Aquarius dynamic is like, like for example, as a YouTuber, I have, I get hundreds and hundreds of comments on each one of my videos. All of the positive ones, it's like my brain just totally ignores, even though I'm super appreciative of them. So comment for the algorithm. But it's like someone will comment one negative thing and I'll attach myself to it. And something I've had to work on for years now and I'm still working on is like, I can't let that get to me. Like, you know, everyone's going to have their own opinions. Everyone's going to have their own perceptions. Like some people like literally hate me and think that I'm this horrible person and other people like love me. Like I had a comment like uh, on a, a weekly a couple of weeks ago, like some person's like, I almost killed myself. And then I watched this and I'm so glad I didn't. And then someone else was like, you deserve to die. <laughs> and so I'm just kind of like, there's really no winning. And so I look at this moon and Leo opposite Pluto and Aquarius. It's like, you really can't worry about like what other people think. Um, you got to know what's right for you. And you are going to get criticized. You are going to, um, not everyone's going to support you. Your family may not support you. Your friends may not support you. You're, you're, you may not even support you. Like you might even be your biggest critic, but like, you got to know where your heart is. Like you got to know what it is that you want. You got to know what it is that you are like, what's actually going to make your heart light up on fire. And so the moon will, as we get through Thursday, square Mercury by the end of the day. And so there is this kind of like, as we're relearning and rethinking things with Mercury retrograde, I think the moon and Leo squaring it is like, you're not going to be perfect. Like, like, I don't know if you, some of you have just started watching my channel. Go back. I, I've been doing this. I'm on year seven now. My first two years of videos sucked. And the reason why is because I got in my own way and I never allowed myself to be like, Wow, I'm not, I, how can I do this better? I thought what I was doing was fine. You know, I'm a Leo son, so I'm always like, I'm right. Like, there's no, there's no way around it. And this moon squaring Mercury is kind of like, you, you, if, you, if you're trying to start a YouTube channel, like your first video is not going to be perfect. It's not going to get any views. Like, it's, I think something, this is something like Mr. Beast does. It's like your first hundred videos are going to suck and no one's going to watch them. And you can't be upset about that. Like that's a part of the the learning process. And like it might hurt your pride a little bit to do something new and to look dumb. Like I know for me, I have like a not a dumb complex, but like you know, like some of you might understand this because you might deal with this too. But it's like I have a fear of like being stupid. I have a fear of being dumb. So how I've counteracted that is like uh, just like being the first one to like say like for example, I've talked about some of the personal development programs I did that were really good for me in my life. And the first one I did, it was uh, like this basic one. It was like a three day weekend. And the whole time I didn't give a fuck how dumb I was like, or how dumb I looked. But each time the guy said, Oh, this is how you change your life. I'd get up with the microphone and say, okay, that's great. You say that, but how does this apply for me? I don't understand this. What does this actually mean? Like, I don't, I'm not afraid to ask dumb questions because I'd rather like, look dumb in front of everybody and get what I need out of it rather than feel dumb and be like, well, I don't actually know what I'm doing and I'm too scared to actually ask about it. And, you know, a lot of people after that weekend came up to me and they're like, thank you for asking those questions because I felt too scared to ask them and I had the same ones. And I look at this moon and Leo scoring Mercury and retrograde is like, you're doing something different. You're doing something new. You're not going to have all of the right answers right now. And it's better to ask them and it's better to like let go of that ego of like being right and, you know, not being in not being afraid to look dumb in front of people because this is a learning process and like, you're going to look dumb no matter what. Like that's something I, that always makes me feel better. Is like, I look dumb period. Like I'm literally an astrologer. So like, while a lot of you might think that's cool. A lot of people in the world don't think that's very cool, but I just don't care because I know like, I love this job. I love what I fucking do. And why worry about that? So I look at Thursday as, um, there is this level of feeling good, feeling confident, but there is this, uh, level of you're not going to get everything perfect. 
your your first performance, your first YouTube video, your first anything is not going to be perfect, and it's a better time to learn. So that's what this is about. I got to rush this a little bit because my battery's dying. I don't know why. It's like not charging. But anyway, we get to Friday. The moon is going to make a sextile to Venus, and it's going to square Uranus and trine Jupiter. Kind of a little bit of a ping pong, well, not a ping pong, a pinball action going on on Friday. Moon sex telling Venus, there's a lot of fun, there's a lot of stimulation. Moon and Leo, you're chatting, you're conversing, and people are like, hey, thank you for asking that question. Hey, thank you for looking dumb because now I feel better and now, and then that boosts your confidence. The moon's gonna square Uranus, where again, you might be like, hey, I have a question, let me ask it. You get the answer, but then you try it and you fuck everything up, or like something gets disrupted and it's not perfect. And you kind of have to, you know, just laugh it off. Cause I think after the moon, you know, or maybe even the moon squaring Uranus is trying something out you never tried before and it works out really well because afterwards the moon shines Jupiter where there's like, hey, like this moon shine Jupiter Friday night going into Saturday is really awesome. Like we're feeling confident, we're feeling brave, we're feeling bold, we're feeling like, you know what, I can do this. I do have the capability. So this is really looking good. I like Friday. There's gonna be a, a lot of fun and stimulation and conversation. There is gonna be a disruption. It's up to you, in my opinion, of whether or not it's going to be good or bad. It really depends on how you handle it. But then afterwards, I think there's a lot of just like reaffirming your own beliefs of like your own confidence. We get to Saturday. The moon will ingress into Virgo. It will go opposite Saturn. And then Mars will sextile Uranus. The big thing here is as the moon goes into Virgo and opposite Saturn is, again, the moon in Virgo wants to be meticulous, wants to be perfect. Saturn in Pisces says that's not how it's going to work this time around. Like Saturn in Pisces is like, hey, you just got to be good enough. Like, again, I've been talking a lot about my music that I've been working on. Um, it's still not coming out for a while, but I've got like finally like stuff like, like I can't just drop it all. I've got like a content plan that I'm going to be doing. So bear with me, but it's all in the works. But when it comes to music, like you could sit there and analyze and analyze and it's got to be perfect to perfect. But sometimes it's just good enough and just put it out. And this moon in Virgo opposite Saturn and Pisces is like if you try to pair like tear everything apart, you know, piece by piece, you're just going to go a little bit crazy. And there's just some like. The moon in Virgo opposite Saturn and Pisces, things could always be better, but guess what? This is good enough and you're just going to have to deal with it. Uh, but then Mars also six tells Uranus and this isn't like, I guess it's good. Um, I, I, the reason I'm kind of like this is like, you know, Uranus is very disruptive, very innovative, doing something very new and unique. Anything as Mars is in Cancer. Again, we're doing all these things that are very difficult for us to do and maybe a little bit emotional about it. Um, or like insecure, like for me, like for years, I didn't know how to cook. I had to learn how, like now I actually I'm pretty good at it, but like my mom never taught me how to do that shit. And I would always eat out. And then it wasn't until the pandemic where I had to fucking learn how to cook. And like, I remember the first, like I made like steak, green beans and like hash browns and it was fucking awesome. And I was like, but I was super insecure about it. Cause it was like, I, I went to the grocery store and I'd be like, fuck, what do I buy? What is ingredients? What, what's healthy? And you know, no one tells you that and everything's fucking bullshit anyway. And like, I finally just, you know what? Like, I'm going to go to the grocery store. I need to eat this food. Like I'm going to just figure it out. And I felt very insecure about it. Um, but I tried it and it was actually like a fucking awesome meal. Like it was really good. Um, and so that's how I look at like Mars and Cancer, sex telling you're honest. It's like, don't be afraid to try something that you know you need to take care of. And maybe it might be better than you expected. So I really like that. That's the only major highlight for this week. Uh, was that it? Yeah. Then we get to Sunday and the moon's just going to be making a trine to Mercury as it's in Virgo. I'm really liking this because I think as the moon's in Virgo, when now that it's opposite Saturn, it's like, okay, we can't be too judgmental. We can't be too hardcore about you know, everything that we need to specify. But I think as Mercury's retrograde and we're now relearning this process, the, this moon in Virgo is making a connection to retrograde Mercury of like, oh, now I'm seeing how this is different. Like after I cooked that meal for myself, I was like, and I know it's so like, it almost sounds pathetic being like, I learned how to cook my first meal, but I didn't know how to do that shit. Like that shit like was a big fucking deal for me. So like maybe some of you grew up with good cooks in your family. I didn't, or at least my dad was because he was a firefighter, but he never taught me anything. Um, I learned how to barbecue, but not like, cook a meal anyway the moon is in virgo trining mercury there's this level of like connecting the dots of like oh this is how i can see things differently this is how i'm seeing things differently this can work in a better way so i think this is a really good day to kind of get yourself organized with understanding this mercury retrograde uh phase so i really like sunday and again just to kind of end this week off, it's a very chill week. It's very simple. It's just a couple of lunar transits, you know, sun sex telling Saturn, Mars sex telling Uranus. It's not a big deal. We get to next week though, Mercury Kazemi, Venus is going to square Neptune. Pluto goes retrograde, which isn't the biggest deal, but it's the first one in Aquarius. And we have our last lunar eclipse in Scorpio and Venus enters Cancer. 
next week is when all of the changes are really starting to come into play. So uh, let me know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and I'll be seeing you guys next week.